thank you guys for coming today. So we're just gonna go over just a few real quick things. Um, so a lot of you, it's your first year or you're kind of just your first year trying to get things actually figured out because exactly. you were so overwhelmed last year when you came. Um, so these are just the digital subscriptions that we have. Some of them you may have used, some of them you may not have, but we just wanted to go over what we have and some of the neat things that they do. So the first one is book flicks and probably all of you guys have probably used the book flicks. But one thing that's important about the book flicks that I put on there, um, that username and that password, you can send that home on your newsletters. That's something you can share with parents and the kids can have access to it at home. Um, there's a shortcut on all of our desktops in our school, uh, but they can do that at home. I did not put the web address in there because it's a really, really long one to get there, but it's really easy for them to Google. Well, it's not really, long. it's just the spelling is really weird. I didn't think like it's G-R-O-L-I-E-R -E and I did not think that would be a good one for parents to be trying to type, but it's easy to Google book flicks and get there. So do you guys use this one? Is this one you guys use pretty often? Um, so one of the neat things about it that I like a lot, it's got the nonfiction story or the fiction stories let it load, that it reads aloud to the kids. They're kind of like a little animated movie. Um, look at Amazing Grace. But then it has a nonfiction counterpart. And so you've got the fiction story that you can go through and it watch, you know, the kids can watch and it's interesting. But then we have the nonfiction counterpart that goes with it and it's a book that you can read aloud with the kids. Um, another thing that I really like about it, the vocabulary, the words that are in yellow, they don't know what they mean. You click on those and it tells them the definition of that word. Um, so these are really good things to do, like if you do stations with your kids, you know, where they're rotating through computers. Because, and even if, what it'll do too, if you've got a kid that's uh, not a very high reader, it reads it to them. So, if I could get it to work, it reads it to them. also helps if the sound's turned on. So it reads it to them and they can go through and do that. So this is something that they can do independently or you can do it with your whole class. It also has um, some neat little puzzles and things that go along with it. So you can do the word match, which came first, put in the book in order. So it's got neat little puzzles that go with each story. So that's book flicks. Does anybody have any questions about book flicks? You guys are an easy crowd. <laughs> Okay, then the newer one that we have is BookFlix Counterpart. It's TrueFlix. <clears throat> and uh, just like BookFlix, you can send this home with your kids. And um, they've got a lot of different topics. And so, uh, but if you're doing nature and you want them to go home and watch the earthquake one with their parents tonight because you're doing some kind of project on earthquakes, they can do this at home. And it's got a video that goes through it, and then it has the, the um, nonfiction book to read. It also has lesson plans that go with it, and um, has the showing what you know, the questions, the word match. Explore the web is a really neat one because when you click on it, it takes you, these are articles um, that are on their level that they can pull up and read. So if you're wanting to know more about the topic that you're on, this is a, I mean, so that's just on earthquakes. There's a lot that goes along with it. So there's a lot of information in one spot. So the True Flicks, I really like the True Flicks. It's a really, really good one. So any questions about True Flicks? Okay. So those are the two that you can share with parents. Um, and then the next one that's on here is Reading A to Z. So I'm going to sit down and show you Reading A to Z because there's a lot of clicking on Reading A to Z. Reading A to Z is my favorite website that is ever created. And so we have a subscription for each grade level. I did not put your login information on your little handout because you need to get that from your teammates. Um, but Reading A to Z, it has just about anything you can possibly want on here. It has level books, which is what you guys probably use, these things which you probably use the most. Um, but it also has really, really simple. It has highly decodable books. It has alphabet books. Um, it has read aloud books that are made for you to read aloud, sound and symbol books. It has just about anything that you could possibly want, the genre collections. Um, so, and one thing that's new that it has, let's see, are the um, graphic novels. So in these, 
you can either print them out and we have a lot of these printed out but if it's one that you're just wanting to read with your class just one time let's see we have the projectable And the projectable is you can put it up on the active board and can read through it as a class. You can also set this up like if you do stations on the computers and that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a lot of these, there's a lot of these printed throughout the building. So you don't even, but you can print these home and send them home for homework. Um, so we'll actually talk more about at the bottom where some of these are. Um, we also have here, there are assessments. Um, you can send home, there's benchmarking passages, um, fluency passages, high reading. And so what I would do with these fluency passages, if you can use them in your classroom, one of the ways that I think they work really, really well is there are things that you can send home to parents to practice fluency. Because it's not the testing materials, it's not something you're not allowed to share, but it's very, very similar to what we're doing with dibbles and all that stuff. So you can send the fluency passages home to them and they're level two, just like the leveled readers. And so you could start, even though they may supposed to be at a level J by the end of second grade, you could start them on a level G doing the fluency passages to get really fluent with that and keep bumping them up and sending those home for homework. Uh, has Reader's Theater. Reader's Theater is an excellent thing to practice for um, fluency and that kind of stuff. You can search by topic, you can search by grade level. There's um, some books in here too that I love. If this, these would work really, really well for you if you were doing partner reading. They're um, multi-level books, so they're partner reading. And some one partner may have a really, really high part and the other partner has a really low part, but they're in the same book and they can read those books together. So that would work really well for you where you've got multiple grade levels um, on this. So, but reading A to Z, if you've not spent a lot of time looking around reading A to Z, please, please do, because there's so much more on there than just the leveled readers. And um, it, with each leveled reader, there are lesson plans, there's worksheets to do with it. With each leveled reader, it's not just the book. There's so much that goes with the book. So if this is one you've not spent a lot of time kind of exploring, you just kind of use the books that are printed, there's really, really, really great stuff here. Uh, the paired books are the ones that have the uh, multiple, multiple levels. But one thing too that I like that they have added on here you have a science section, a math section, and a social studies section because you know you don't have time to teach those separately. So they have the books that are leveled books in those topics. So really, really good stuff in reading A to Z. Um, second grade has science A to Z. So if that's something you guys are interested in the next year, you might go look at second grade and see what they have and what they use it for. And we can talk about purchasing a, purchasing a subscription for it next year. So, but second grade has it, but the whole school has reading A to Z. So, yes. So, if I, because I do have a second grader, like, does it matter um, if I, what, like, if I log in as a second grade teacher, am mm -hmm. I going to see something different than if I log in as a no. first grade teacher? No, the logins look the same for absolutely everybody. Okay. When you have a subscription to it, you get everything. Okay. So, but yeah, you would need second grade's login information to be able to access science, science A to Z. Okay. Yeah. And that's not one I have used a whole lot, so um, second grade would be a lot of help with that one. But reading A to Z, it's, when I was in the classroom, I couldn't function without this website. I mean, I really, really could not function without it. I paid for it out of my own pocket for many, many years is how important it was. So, does anybody have any questions or anything about this one? Yeah, I'm excited about this one. The levels of the books, they line up like perfectly with the TRC level. Yes. Yeah, where it's doing, you know, when it says you're a G, it's a G in the TRC kit. So, yeah, they're wonderful. Like, this is a really, really good thing. And um, you can print the books out, and you don't have to. You can, the ones that we have printed up, we have laminated and bound. There's an option on here called a pocket book. And so it puts four pages on each one, and so it makes like a little book about this big for the kids. So you can do that for them just to keep. You know, you can print them without printing a million pages and you don't have to keep doing them where you're gonna keep reusing them over and over and over again. But this one, it's got just, I mean, amazing, really good things on here, so. For the part we used, it's got the five day, it's got a five day lesson plan laid out for one book. Yeah. I can't remember where it's at. So, but yeah, they're, they're wonderful. I mean, it really is. And so, 
but like you know we've got the easy decodable books that aren't even really a level you know because they're so easy so that would be work and you know you've got the sound symbol books you know where we're just doing it's like you know this one would work really good for you yeah. uh, is there like a login for ec or would we do it just ask another grade level grade for level. theirs yeah they can give it to you So, but yeah, they've got for letters, but yeah, this one, there's a lot of stuff on here that you could yeah. use for your kids. A lot. Awesome. I've never looked at me either. I just saw the printed out ones out and about, you know, but yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's a really, really good website. So, I mean, they've got, it, it, there's a lot of really good stuff on here. Um, it's one that you could explore for days and find new things. So, a lot, and there's poetry books, but the graphic novels and the comic books, that's a new section on this. The kids are obsessed with graphic novels right now. I, mean, I cannot keep them on the shelves. They are absolutely obsessed with graphic novels. And so you can project it on the active board and do it as a class. You can print those however you want to do it with you. Um, if you want to print them and keep them to use for years, you can do that. So we have the binding machine. There is one um, in each workroom, I think, to do the binding and that kind of stuff. So. Uh, the binding just lasts a lot longer than staples. I was staples. saying, I didn't know that either. You didn't know we had the binding <laughs> machine? Yeah, see, you're learning all kinds of things. I know, wow. <laughs> but you're right, last year I would not have, it would have gone right out of the head. Yeah, you, <laughs> so, didn't, <laughs> yeah, you didn't need this too last year. Okay, so that one's reading A to Z. Um, then we have Brain Pop. We have Brain Pop and Brain Pop Junior. Um, I pulled Junior up, that's the one we're going to kind of talk about because Brain Pop some of the older ones may use it, and you may use it for one or two topics, but Brain Pop, for the most part, is a little bit too high. Brain Pop Junior is the one that you want to use. Do you use Brain Pop, Julie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's got the um, little videos about each thing. Um, it's got our one movie of the week pulled up. This week it's The Heart, which since we're learning about Valentine's Day, it makes sense to learn about the circulatory system. Um, so but you can search by topic. You pull them up. And you know, there's really, really simple ones like long A, but then you'll pull up one and you're learning about the um, water cycle. And so there's all different, but you've got a video to watch. So sound's not working for some reason. We've got a video to watch where we have this girl and Moby, Moby is the um, robot that goes and does everything with her. Then when you get finished with it, this is what I love about it. We've got our little cartoon that they can read. Spell well, W-H-A-L, almost there. What's at the end? A tail. So they're just, <laughs> you know, it's just silliness. Uh, but they have that, they have um, an easy quiz and a hard quiz that they can do. So you could do it as a grade kind of thing if you wanted to. Um, they have um, write it out where it gives them a writing prompt and they, it, you can print it where they actually write, talk it out where it gives you discussion points. So it has a whole lesson plan with each little video too. So, and this is just another one that is just spend some time looking around on it. So, but see, we've got the lesson ideas down here. When you go there, um, it gives you, you know, a lot of lesson plans. It's not grade level specific. It gives you lesson plans for younger kids and older. Long A is gonna give you mostly lesson plans for younger kids, but when you pick the other ones, it shows, you know, across the board, it has lesson plans for many, many, many grade levels. So you've got word play where they build the words. It's got a, a lot of different little games that go with it. Draw about it. If they don't want to, if you have kids that aren't able to write about it, that it has a question and they draw about it. it has a little, some kind of like little activity that they do. And um, so write the missing words to complete the sentences. So this is about the video that's there and it has all the long chair snake. And so you would print that out and they could write the long A words in. But it has a lot of printables that go with it. So. A lot of people use Brain Pop just for the videos to fill time, but it has a lot of really beneficial things that go with it. So does anybody have any questions about our Brain Pop? Okay. Then the next thing that is just to go over there, we have a whole back section of that library, like way back there. And there's some good stuff back there that sometimes I think people don't realize they're there. Um, I thought of you a lot better with this one. So we have um, kits of books that have like the manipulatives and stuff as you did the read alouds. And um, so like this one is blueberries for Sal. And we've got a lot of these, you know, you've got the bucket for the blueberries, you have the bear, you've got the berries, 
I mean, so you've got all the little manipulative things that you guys can handle, and it has kind of some discussion points to go with it, talk about it, ways to go through it, and um, has some ideas on the back in with each one of these. We have a lot of these. We also have a lot, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of books on tape. Um, we have fiction and nonfiction books on tape. So kindergarten used to use these a lot for their rotations, but read to me, so if you do the daily five, you have a read to um, read to me section or listen to reading section. And so the books on tapes work really well for that. And so, but yeah, I thought a lot for you, Becca, for these, yeah. but then we have a lot of those back there with the manipulatives and the books on tape. Um, there are a lot of reading A to Z books back there. So the reading A to Z books, we have some back here. There's some in the first grade workroom that are already printed and you have access to where you can print what you want to. But there's quite a few back there and in the first grade workroom. Are there some in the second grade workroom? There are in the fourth grade. Fourth grade workroom. I don't ever get to make it downstairs, but. So we have a lot of those books already printed so to kind of look through. Um, then there's other things back there. Um, fourth grade has them checked out. I was gonna show them to you guys. Like if, we, if you're studying rocks, the Gem and Mineral Society donated a whole collection of rocks of different types and they tell us what kind they are. So we have those. Um, we have this book. We've got a lot of books like this, but then I just grabbed a few. This one is um, Living Stories of the Cherokee. It's written by Barbara Duncan. Barbara has a grandson at this school. She is more than willing to come and visit. So like if you're doing this and you're reading these stories, they're short stories to read aloud. If you're reading these stories to your class and you want Barbara to come talk to them, she will. I mean, she works, she's over the Cherokee Museum. That's what she does. But she is more than willing to come to schools to talk. So, but we've got this back there. We have a lot of um, books like this to use. And then um, these, I just got these last week. Um, Ag in the Classroom, some books about that. So um, this is something Farm Bureau sponsors and they send us books with lesson plans about you know doing agriculture in the classroom. So we've got two of those. We've got ice cream and obviously they're talking about um, milk here and the cattle with that. But we've got harvest year and they have the lesson plans with it. So there's a lot of stuff. There's movies back there. There's uh, VHS and DVD. Both all your rooms should play both of those. But we have both of those things back there. There's just a lot of stuff back there. So sometimes when you have a chance, go back there and wander around. It's easy to forget that it's there because it's hidden in the back, but there's good stuff back there that we should be using. So does anybody have any questions or anything? Yes, ma'am. Is there like a, a sign out sheet for any of those things? No, you know? no, um, that's for the teachers to use. And I feel like we're all professionals and <laughs> you can keep up with it. So I have enough to keep up with out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anything else? All right, you can quit filming us. Thank you.